Hello, Dragon Lords and ladies. I'm Pixel from the War Dragons team, and some of you might recognize me from our official Twitch channel. I recently had the awesome opportunity to interview Brian Oliu and Michael Rudin, the author and editor behind the new War Dragons novel, All Things Burn. If you missed that stream, keep watching. They offer some really cool insight into what it was like to create the book, and we got a chat about their really unique jobs. We also have a few more limited run War Dragons posters that we were giving away during the stream, but you can enter to win one of them over on our Facebook and Twitter pages up until January 30th. All of those details will be in the description box right below. Finally, huge congrats to the top 16 from the great contest. Dreadnought, Equilibrium, Lethal Squad, Dragongasm, Ancient's Ascent, and Atari Overload, who are all featured in the book. Please like this video if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe to catch future videos before you fly away. It starts out really, really dark, and uh, I mean, obviously, it's called war dragons. Like we're not expecting bunnies and rainbows and stuff. But uh, why did you decide to take it in that direction, Ren? For me, it's it's always so much more fun to write dark, right? Um, so I think that's always kind of a fun thing. Um, but you know, it adds a lot of kind of agency uh, to the book as well as adds some stakes to the gameplay uh, itself. And so, you know, my goal, I guess, was to, I wanted to present uh, Gustav as like this horrible thing, person um, that you really wanted to like, you give him his just desserts. Um, you know, you really wanted to, you know, see what was, you know, he was thinking about and try to, you know, vanquish him. Uh, so I think that we all like really love dark media that's gritty. Um, and so I really wanted to kind of capture that essence in the book. Um, and I really wanted people to kind of look forward to those moments where he's like, oh no, what horrible thing is he going to do next? As you were writing him, what sort of works, like other works that you draw upon? I really enjoy fairy tales. Um, and of course we think of like fairy tales, we think of, you know, your basic like Beauty and the Beast, um, um, Disney fied stuff, but in actuality, you know, the actual source texts of fairy tales are like horribly gruesome. They're incredibly matter of fact um, in the way that they storytell. Um, and so as a result, it gets really weird and dark um, a lot of times, just these kind of matter of fact moments where it's like, oh, this thing happened, this horrible thing, this person chopped off their fingers, the end, you know, and just kind of stating it very matter of factly. And as a result, it kind of gets dark and twisted um, and weird. And so that was something I want to capture with uh, Gustav, which is, you know, he would say these hard, do say and do these horrible things, absolutely no filter, because he believed that he was in the right. Um, and anytime we kind of run into those people, those like megalomaniacs who think that they're in the right and doing like the right and just thing, and meanwhile they're committing horrible atrocities, um, I, that's really intriguing and also like really, really scary. As we know, Gustav is a very, very important character in this novel, but he's not just the only one. We also have Ash. So what made you decide that we wanted to tell the story from like two different viewpoints instead of just Gustav. We wanted to provide fans with like as rich of a backstory as possible. From the beginning when we aligned with War Dragons, the team there and Pocket Gems, this wasn't just about exploring the world and the timeline of what happens in Atlawa that got us from the beginning to where it is today. It was answering questions like how does a child become a killer and how does a kingdom's adopted son end up taking that kingdom over. And the best way, I think, from uh, from our perspective as fiction writers for this particular project, um, or fiction writer and fiction editor, because it was all Brian's words, um, the best way of adding that subtext was to show it from two perspectives. That way, you've got two timelines to explore. You've got two geographies to explore. You've got two characters with their own families to explore. And all those additional details and perspectives that's a bigger world. And that was the big goal and why the War Dragons team reached out to us is we wanted to world build with this project and kind of fill in the gaps that the, that um, would really enrich the experience for gamers. And from like a, a reader challenge perspective, it can be really fun to read a piece from two perspectives because you start seeing things from different POVs, but then maybe one narrator is unreliable. Maybe one is getting the facts wrong and one is getting it right. Um, and on a really high meta level, I just think a game um, like film honoring like multiple perspectives in fiction is kind of just like a nod to the fact that that's how these forms are built. And it's a little bit of fun to tell a story in fiction form from multiple perspectives too. In writing it, were there any like awesome moments in the book that you just really enjoyed making? Great question. Um, you know, as I just like tried to 
you know, make myself seem like less of a monster. Of course, the fun parts are like the super gory and, and brutal moments. Um, those are parts are, are, of course, a lot more fun to write. Um, and so uh, for me, what I did is I did a lot of thinking about like what grosses me out um, mm -hmm. and things that I, you know, makes me uneasy. Um, and for me, there's nothing more like kind of visceral, um, than, you know, mouths and teeth and blood. And, and so that was something that I really kind of grasped onto and was like, okay, this stuff really grosses me out. So let me like kind of get disgusted while I write this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that was, that was actually, you know, fun in a weird way, uh, was to kind of sit down and say, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, what are some ways that are like, oh man, that'd be really gross. Let's go with that. Um, so as I was writing this, I didn't exactly eat all that much, which was, I don't right. know if it's a, good or a bad thing, as <laughs> I, but I knew if that, if I was like creeping myself out that I knew that I was doing a good job at it. It's kind of fascinating too as you read it because the brutality doesn't just kick in at the end of the book. It's there from the very beginning, from the very beginning of Gustav's life. And yeah, so like page I, one. <laughs> page one, right? And so by the end of it, you're so conditioned to that violence that it becomes less shocking to you, just as it does to Gustav. And as a reader, that's like another like another way that you can start developing empathy for the character, or even just um, just kind of living it alongside him. You start to kind of understand him better. Um, and I thought that was kind of fascinating. The other thing as an editor that I loved working out with Brian, besides getting those dark, gory drafts at like three in the morning and wondering <laughs> what the hell was going on. <laughs> um, and besides the timeline, like that I kind of talked about earlier, of filling in the gaps on what happens in this world, um, it was revealing not just who the reader is. So you guys who are reading this on your, you know, your drives to work or on the couch on your ebook, but also who the player is, who the player is playing the game on their couch and on the drive or on the train to uh, to work. And so, kind of establishing who the reader is versus who the player is, plus all these characters there's like a tremendous aha moment in the book. And for me, outside of all the gory details and all the narrative and, and all the timeline stuff, it's those kind of aha moments that I can't wait to hear about from fans, whether they really like those or not. What parts of the game did you want to make sure were actually included in the novel? I really wanted to see in there the most, and that was how can a player control a dragon or how can even a character in the world of War Dragons or this book um, create a fire-breathing giant flying creature and once we established that in the lore once we answer that question fundamentally how can somebody control a dragon well then we could actually weave that into gustav and create this really cool authentic motivation for him why is he um doing everything he's doing well it's connected to how you can speak and control to dragons so without giving too much away that was definitely the thing that i wanted to see answered in the book the most and I think we did a, um, it's like a fun reveal for the reader. I want to know if you have any advice for anyone who is looking to get into writing, whether that's for video games, whether that's just writing books or essays or whatever it is. Do you have any advice for people out there? Yeah. Uh, well, the first one is, it seems easy, but it's hard, which is you got to write. That's the first thing you got to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's so easy to get wrapped up in writing the perfect story um, or waiting for the right time to kind of start on this grand masterpiece that you've been thinking about forever. Um, it requires, as you said, it requires like a ton of discipline. Um, I'm not a person who necessarily writes every single day, uh, but I'm also, I'm one of those people I'm constantly thinking about writing, I'm talking about writing, I'm taking notes, um, I'm writing things down on my phone, um, I'm a runner, so I'm constantly, I, I try to distract myself uh, from anything but actually running, so I think about writing. Um, so all that kind of stuff, piecing it all, all that stuff together. Um, and the other thing, you know, you asked about favorite books, I think you got to read as well, um, and not just necessarily the classics, but taking in any number of texts, and when I say a text, I don't necessarily mean you know, sitting off a book, but you know, read tweets, read articles, uh, literary journals, um, games, movies, um, just exposing yourself to all these different types of media uh, and mediums um, will definitely make you a better writer and just kind of absorbing and stealing and you know, uh, making things malleable and, and just kind of getting out there. I think that's, that's the key. That's awesome advice. How about you, Mike? Can't beat that, no. no. <laughs> uh, that's some really good advice. I'll go a different direction, get tactical, buy yourself a really good coffee maker, 
Um, establish really good deadlines and stick to them. Punish yourself if you don't meet your own deadlines. Make them real. Don't pay yourself. Don't get to, um, I don't know, have that coffee that you just brewed. Like if you don't hit your quota, then you don't get to start on whatever you're looking forward to. Um, and I think, you know, Brian brought up a lot of good points about immersing yourself in fiction and also the discipline of getting in your chair. I think another big piece of it is you have to think about this story that you're going to be writing and once you find it, it has to be a story that you can't not write because it's going to take up your life. It's going to take up your weekends. It's going to take up your nights. You're going to say no to plans with friends. If you're serious about the concept, you're going to spend more time with those characters in that world than your real world and some of the characters in your life. And you need to love that idea enough that you're okay not resting until it's done because it's the story you have to write. And kind of like jettisoning off that, that means you have to write honestly. Um, the reader can smell bull from a mile away. Um, so if you're not writing honestly, if you're not putting it all on the page, they can tell. And that kind of goes back to the very first thing we talked about today, which is like how terrifying Brian's words were. He wrote some dark stuff. And I think that's what makes this a compelling mm -hmm. read. And we look forward to all your feedback. But if it didn't scare him as he was writing it, and if it didn't scare me as I was editing that first read, then it would be safe. And safe has been done. So um, I think the big thing is, you know, if it's scaring you, whether because you're being emotionally vulnerable or you're writing really gory stuff, um, that means you're probably on the right track. So just keep going.